laudato si, o mi Signore, laudato si, o mi Signore, laudato si, o mi Signore, be praised in all your creatures, brother, son, and sister moon, in the stars and in the wind, air and fire and flowing water. So, laudato si, you don't have to have a wonderful voice to praise the Lord. Let the whole of nature praise the Lord for you. We're celebrating the feast of St. Francis this, this week and it brings to mind how easy it is to find God in creation. When we talk about that, God isn't more present here than he is in a pub or in a cinema or in church. The difference is whether we are aware of it. I suppose it's easier to find, to feel God in church than in a cinema. But use this creation to find God. It's our becoming aware of God. God out there all the time. You know, a friend of mine was brought up in an orphanage. Uh, she said they were very kind and very strict. And they, at the edge of the orphanage there was a beautiful lake. And the sunset was fantastic. And in storybooks they talked about the sunrise and the sunset. But she'd never seen the sunrise because there was a strict law, rule, that no boy or girl may leave the dormitory until the bell goes, except to go to the lavatory. But one day she said, I'm going to see the sunrise. She's got all her clothes ready and her shoes on her chair, and she crept to the door. She thought all the, the, the crunching of the um, boards would wake her when you know, she got out and went down to the lake and waited. And then she realised, of course, the sun wouldn't come up over the lake but the other way and she turned round and there she said it was disappointing a round red ball in the sky not so beautiful and then she turned round and saw the lake the sun was red but the lake was golden birds were coming alive and she started singing the top of her voice laudato si o signore oh the beauty I see he has given to me and she's just lost in wonder and contemplation. And in the middle of it, she heard the bell go from the dormitory. Oh dear, she's had a loss. She trudged back up the hill, no point in hurrying. And she turned round and said, Lake, I'm in deep trouble. But I'm glad I came, because the god of the lake is much better than the god of the orphanage. We get too caught up in the God of the orphanage, the God of work, the God of house. God is present in his creation. And that's why Pope Francis, or one of the reasons why Pope Francis took the name of Francis. Well, two reasons he gave. You know, when he'd been elected Pope, he hadn't chosen a name, and the cardinals, all the other cardinals came up to congratulate him, and one said, don't forget the poor. Ah, and that gave him the idea, and he took the name of Francis. But the other reason was also because of his love of creation and seeing God in creation. And I think the two main elements about St. Francis are brought out in those reasons given by Pope Francis. A love of the poor, and how important that is, and the beauty of God in creation. The poor is an essential part of our teaching, and we can forget it. But also, finding God in creation. When you see this beautiful scene here, it isn't that God made it. Now I've come along and we see it. God is creating this as we look at it. To think of creation as static, that God made it, and that's what it keeps it in being. Oh no, no, God is creating. A bit like I'm humming a tune. If I stop humming, when I stop singing, the tune stops. If God stopped creating, none of this would exist. You can't see God, but you can see God working in front of your eyes. The sky, the trees, the sea, the people in the water. Whatever we see, I raise my hand. 
by the power of God. It's God working that makes it possible. We see God. And then Pope uh, St. Francis, therefore, saw himself as part of this great creation. The sun was his brother, brother sun, sister moon, brother earth. You know, when I, I sit out here sometimes at night time and I look up at the stars, how, how far do you think I can see? Fifty light years. I see the light of a star and it's taken all that time at the speed of light to reach me. The distance is beyond my power to imagine. And God is creating that near little me in the middle of this created by the Lord. Use creation, use the beauty of nature, or other. Most of our life we have to just get on with. We, in this uh, country where I'm, the bus, a lot of buses are blue and beautiful blue. But I can't stop and admire the blue or I miss the bus. But at other times you need to stop and look at the beauty. Of creation is easier to see. To see God in creation, that was how Francis really found God. It's a wonderful prayer. And also the need to identify ourselves with Christ in seeing how we can help the poor. It's not an, an extra to his teaching. This is an essential part of the teaching of Christ. If you look, you realize in the New Testament, one line in ten is an appeal for how to help the poor. In St. Luke's Gospel, one line in six is an appeal for us to help the poor. The letter of St. James, one line in five, it's an essential part of Jesus said, I came to bring the good news to the poor. That's why he came. So these two elements of finding God in creation and our awareness of the poor and our need to help come together in our generation. Because what is happening, not only the beauty of creation, something is happening that we are destroying, or there's a danger of our destroying creation. Sometimes realizing it, often not. Two reasons I see for it. One is, in the history of mankind, we've always had more than enough. Imagine the caves and in the Middle Ages, and all of that, all through the ages. If you will, you can, there's plenty of fish in the sea. If you want wood, you cut down a tree. There's always more than enough. But now it's got to the stage where there isn't more than enough. We realize how much we are taking and not giving back. Of course, if you talk to the fishermen here, they say there are plenty of fish when we go out there. But we know from research that unless we ration it, and limit how much they can take, so there will not be. We're fishing too much and taking so much out that there won't be enough, and it's hard for us to realize. But also, not only because we caught up with that, but recent technology in the last couple of hundred years has come so far quickly we haven't really discovered how to use it. And as a result, we are destroying it. You realize in the shops they're trying to stop us using plastic bags. Okay, you take a plastic bag, you finish with it, throw it away. You know how long it's going to last when you throw it away? A hundred years plus. We say at that rate everything can be covered with plastic. Precisely, and that is what is happening in some islands. It become glutted and choked up with plastic, and fish are losing their lives. And with plastic, something we need to come to terms with to understand how to use technology. And in this destruction of the universe, of the of creation, it's always the poor who suffer, those with power and those with money can cope. I came across a lovely poem by Joan Murray. Just by chance I came across it the other day. At Eku Vukeni in Natal, South Africa, a woman carries water on her head. After a year of drought, 
when one child in three is at risk of death, she returns from a distant well carrying water on her head. The engineers have reversed the river. Those with power can keep their power, but one woman is carrying water on her head. The cattle trolls are empty, the goats are gone, no milk now for children, but she's carrying water on her head. The sun does not dissuade her, nor the dried earth that blows against her, as she carries the water on her head, trusts her own head to bring to her people what they need now between life and death. She's carrying them water on her head. And that is how we read with St. Francis to come aware of God in creation and in the poor who suffer from our lack of, our destroying it. Pray with Francis that we may see God in his beautiful creation. Praise Lord, laudato si, omi signore.